Hey guys, I am plaid creator Bianca and today I will be showing you guys how you can make small, quick and easy no prep small decor for your tier trays at home using folk art chalk paint. So we'll go ahead and we will jump right into this project. We will be creating this small sign here which like I said is really quick and really easy. It requires no prep. And I'll also go through some of our completed projects that are over here to the left of me once we finish this one, just so you guys can have some expert in extra inspiration when you are creating projects that are similar to this or other quick and small projects that you can use to decorate your tiered trays with at home. So for this project, you will need a small piece of wood. I have one here that kind of looks like a small pallet. But if you just have a regular piece of wood, that works just as well. You'll also need a clothespin, some greenery. This can be real if that's all you have at home. Or if you have like a faux piece, you can definitely grab that. I also have a small printed picture here. This can even be used for um, or as a picture frame if you don't even want to use it for a tiered tray. But for now, I just have this printed picture, which is a really cute farmer's market lemon bumblebee design. And then of course you'll need paint. And I'll go through the paint colors that we have here. I'll be using Folk Art Home Decor Chalk, Sheepskin. I'll also be using Castile. And then the last color that I will be using is Rich Black. So these are the three colors that we will be using. I'll also be using Mod Podge Matte. And then I also have this wooden block here. So I'm actually gonna distress this and I'll show you a really easy way to do that with this wooden block. So we'll circle back to this in just a few minutes here. But we will go ahead and get started with our base coat on our wooden palette. So I'm going to go ahead and start with our sheepskin color, which is almost like an off-white ivory color. So we'll go ahead and base coat it. And with this surface, it was already prepped, so there was no need for me to sand it, which is a big part of the reason why this project is super quick and super easy to do. So we're just going to base coat this and then once we have this covered, I will go in with our darker colors and try to make this look a little aged and distressed, give it kind of a farmhouse vibe. So this color is really, really pretty. It's not like a bright, stark white. It's really soft. It almost looks like eggshell. Right, so I'm gonna kinda go in between the cracks here. And like I said, if you just have a regular piece of wood at home, you can definitely use that as well. You probably won't have to go in between any cracks like I am. But just make sure you get it fully covered. And we're doing it small here. This project is small, but you could even do this on a larger scale in the exact same way. You could even do it I like a large picture for your living room, some type of decor for any other room in your house and maybe even hang it on the wall. Same concept, just a little bit bigger. All right. So I think that's a pretty good coat that we have here. And I'm really not even worried about getting it too, too covered, even though it is pretty covered here, I like to see some of that, um, the original wood color coming through. I think that gives it even more of a farmhouse feel. So I'm not gonna go over the edges. 
if you guys can kind of see that right there. I'm actually going to let that stay how it is. If it gets covered with the other colors that we'll go over it with, that's fine. But if it doesn't, I kind of like it that way. All right. So, we are going to distress this using, again, and I'll pull these back out. We have our light gray color here, which is a Castile. And then we have the black color, which is rich black. And again, these are chalk paints. So I will go ahead and start with the Castile color. I already kind of have it poured out here. So an easy way to distress your wooden canvas or your wooden palette, palette is to take a small wooden block and lightly dip it in your paint. You don't want to fully cover it. Just a little bit. All right, and I'm actually even going to wipe just a little bit of it off just to make sure that I don't have too much. So this is how it looks now. I'm gonna get a little bit of that off on the plate over here. because with this color, we are not trying to cover the canvas or the palette like we did with the white slash off-white color that we have here. We're just kind of accenting it, so we don't want too much paint. So, like I said, you wanna cover your wood block with paint, not too much. And then I would suggest going in with the edge of it, not completely laying it down, then maybe starting with the edge right here and just lightly tapping across your wood piece. I'm using the edge of the block here. You can kind of see where the distressed stripes are coming in already. All right. And then we'll go in with our black color here in just a second. an easy way to try to distress something at home if you don't have a wood block or um, something similar that you can use you can definitely use a paintbrush but this way it's a little bit easier I'm gonna go ahead and pour out some of our darker color here which is the rich black we don't want to use too much of this And we're just gonna go over it the same way we did with our other color. So let's see. Let's grab our block once again. Again, I'm gonna lightly cover the block in the paint, not too much. And I'm wiping the excess off. I don't want any big blobs of paint on here. So this is how it looks. And I'm going to go through with the block the same way we did with our gray color. So just lightly going across the wood here. And this is a really cool technique that you can use on even big, bigger pieces of furniture. If you have a dining room table or a dresser, maybe even an old bed that you want to distress, this makes it a lot easier. All right. So as that paint comes off of the wood block, your stripes to get a little bit better 
So now that there's barely any paint left on here, I'm actually gonna lay the block down and just kind of go across it. Just to kind of spread that paint out and even it out. And I'm only doing this because there's absolutely no paint left on this block. So I would suggest waiting until your block is fully unloaded with the paint before you go in and kind of scrub across. All right. So this is what it looks like. I might even go back over this just a little bit more with our sheepskin color, maybe to just cover up some of these darker patches just a little bit, but I actually like it. I like it how it is, but I am going to add a little bit more of our sheepskin color. So I'm just adding just a little bit to my paintbrush here, not too much. And I'm just going back over it. So this looks really nice and weathered. All right. So not too much, I barely have any on my paintbrush here. I just kind of wanted to even it out there. And then after this, we are going to move on to adding our clothespin onto our palette here. And we're gonna do that using a little bit of Mod Podge. All right. So I think this is pretty good here and it's actually pretty dry already. This paint dries very fast. If you need to, you can use a blow dryer. If you are an impatient crafter like I can be sometimes and you don't wanna let it sit and dry, you can definitely use a blow dryer. That will help with the drying time. So we're gonna set our paint off to the side here. So that was super quick, guys. That didn't take long at all. Of course, the bigger your project, of course, the more time it will take. But again, this is just really small, quick and easy for our tiered tray here. So we're gonna move on to adding on our clothespin. And this is just a wood, wooden clothespin. And we're gonna use some Mod Podge, and we're using the matte formula to attach our clothespin onto our wooden palette. So we'll pour a little bit out here. And we're just going to take a paintbrush and add some to the back of it. We'll add a good, a good amount. There we go. All right. And then you just want to take it. I'm going to lay mine slanted. You can definitely add yours on straight if you would like, but I'm going to slant mine just a little bit. And you want to add it towards the top of your canvas or your wooden palette, like so. So you might want to give this about 30 minutes, maybe an hour to dry. This one is already pretty good on there already. If I wiggle it, it doesn't even move yet. But again, like I said, I would give about 30 minutes to an hour to completely dry. And then we are inching towards our last step here. You can grab a picture that you already have at home, or you can go online and find a really cute farmer's market picture like I did here. And this is just regular printer paper, nothing fancy. And then you can also take 
a piece of greenery. Like I said earlier, you can go out in your backyard, just grab a piece off of the tree or a bush. Or if you have some fake greenery laying around at home, you can use that as well. And all you're gonna do is take your printed picture. Uh-oh. So yeah, definitely give that about 30 minutes to an hour to dry. I do have a finished example over here that I can show you guys, but you just wanna add your picture in. Same thing with your greenery. Clamp it down. And your project is pretty much done. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this off to the side and I'll pull out our finished example. And then we'll go through some of the other projects that we have here on the tray. So this is our project, super easy, super, super, super simple and quick. All right. So once it's done and your clip has fully dried, it should look something like this. And you can switch up your colors. You can get creative. If you want to use darker colors, lighter colors, maybe even more vibrant colors, you definitely can. I'll go through some of the other colors that I have over here to the right of me. But this is the finished example. As you can see, the clip is on and it's secured. I'm going to go ahead and add my picture back in. And this is just something that you can set in your tear tray. That is really, really cute. Um, so yeah, let's go through some of the other projects that we have over here. So this is another example of a wooden sign that you can use and create. So this one is almost like a serving board and it's almost like a picture frame where you can kind of set it up. So same thing, we distressed it, we painted it. Um, the only difference is, instead of adding the greenery into the clip, we glued it onto the back here. And then we also grabbed some twine and we wrapped it around the board. And what you can do to secure it is add Mod Podge onto it. Let that dry for about, again, 30 minutes to an hour and that should stick on there. And then again, I just printed off a picture that I found online and I stuck it inside of our clothes in here. So this is just an alternative example if you guys want to switch it up and create an additional sign that you can stick on your tray. Another project that we have done are these really cute wood pumpkins. And for these projects, you can use any stencils that you have at home. Again, these are our folk art home decor chalk paints. And I'll let you know what colors we used. But this is just a piece of wood, guys. You're just gonna paint it. And again, if you wanna add a design to it, you can use a stencil. And these are just pieces of a branch. And you can use E6000 to attach them to the top of your pumpkin. For this part, I definitely think that you should let it sit overnight for some extra security. But these are also really, really cute, super simple, not hard at all to make. It's a lot easier than carving pumpkins. <laughs> and let's see. I'll show you the other pumpkin that we have here, which is a darker blue. And we'll show you a non-wooden pumpkin as well. So this color is really, really nice as well. Really, really pretty. And like I said, I'll go through all of those colors in just a second. If you guys want to see them or if you have any questions about them, just let me know. And this is not a wooden pumpkin. This is just a regular foam one, but this is a really, really cute, cute design that you can do as well for some fall decor. All right. So we'll go ahead and set this back over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and go through all of our different colors. And then I'll try to show you the tray so that you can see it as a whole in just a second. But let's go through our colors first. So we have the Vintage Mustard. This is a really beautiful color. So this is the color, actually no, so we have two yellows. So we have the Vintage Mustard and we have the Blazing Yellow. And I'll pull the yellow pumpkin back out so you can see what that looks like. 
So this is our blazing yellow. Really, really pretty. So those are the two yellow colors to choose from. Then we have a really nice green here. This is our Spanish moss. The next color is our provincial blue. And I'll pull our blue pumpkin back out just so you can see what that looks like once it's painted. So that is what it looks like. And I believe this is the blazing yellow that we just saw. So those are the two colors used for this project. Our last few colors are Imperial, and this is like a deep red. And then we have Tuscan red. So this one is even deeper, it's almost like a burgundy. So these are the two red colors. And then we also have antique green. So this is the darker green compared to the lighter green, which is Spanish moss. All right. So these are all of our colors. And again, the project that I just created were made with these colors. So we have Castile, which is a gray, kind of like a lighter gray. It's not super, super dark. And then we have sheepskin. Like I said, that's kind of like an off-white creamish color. And then we have rich black, which is just a plain old black here. And then I'll show you the example that we created one more time, just so you can kind of see those next to the colors. Let's actually lay those right here next to it. So these are the three colors that we used. And then let's see if I can bring the tray over here so you guys can see it together, see all of the projects together on it. Let's see. Let's grab these paints and set them out the way just so you guys can have some inspiration. Hopefully I don't drop this. <laughs> here it is. And we'll set some of our pumpkins back on it just so you can see it all put together. And what I always like to suggest when you are styling things like this, you definitely want things with different heights. So you don't want everything at the same height. I would say something short, something medium tall, and then something tall. And then I always like to throw greenery in the mix whenever I'm styling something. I think it just gives it more of a natural feel. I'm a farmhouse girl, so I always like to throw any type of greenery into my styling at home. And I think it just pulls everything together. So this is our tray all put together with all of our completed projects using our folk art home decor chalk. And I hope that you guys are really inspired to go home and create some fall decor this season, even beyond fall. Halloween is coming up. We have Thanksgiving coming up. We also have Christmas coming up. So hopefully you guys are able to get creative and even switch up your decor throughout the year for your tiered tray. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We can't wait to see you back next time and happy fall.